Hello everyone, I'm Bob McFarlane, the software developer on the Save the Cat team. I've got some great new features to show you today that will make your story development process even more productive. Our new focused layout. This layout allows you to focus on one thing at a time, starting with the title and logline. If you've read the best-selling book on which the software is based, Save the Cat by Blake Snyder, the title and logline are the best place to start. After you've nailed your title and logline, move on to the next step, the beats. The beats are laid out as cards in order within each act. You can review the instructional description for each beat before you get to work, then just type your beat right here. You don't have to open the detail view to work on a beat. Of course, you can still open a beat in the detail view by clicking the keyboard icon. While we're here, let me show you a new feature that will help you narrow your focus even further. Notice the little V button here at the right end of each act divider. Click it to hide the beats in that particular act. You can hide the last three acts, for example, to focus on just the first act, or any combination that helps you focus. Oh, and of course, your selections will be remembered for the next time you come back to the Beats tab. Okay, moving on. As recommended in the Save the Cat methodology, after finishing the beats, it's time to move on to the board. But not right now. As I mentioned, the second video in the series is all about the new features that we've added to the board, so I'm not going to spend any time on it now. Instead, we're going to jump into the Characters tab. As you can see, it's similar to the Beats section, but instead of a divider or section for each act, you have a section for each of your character categories or types. Just a reminder, when you installed Save the Cat, we set you up with three character types as you can see here. You can change these and add as many other categories as you like in the Preferences lists under the Save the Cat menu. All right, let's add a character. I'm going to add a main character, so I'll click the plus button on the main character divider. Whenever you add a character or other entity like a location, the detail view will open with some fields to get you thinking a little more in depth about your character. Let me type in the character's name, then I'll talk about some of the details. Now you've got some important details to think about for your character, such as their wants and needs and the six things that need fixing. If you want to learn more about those fields, click the little info button next to the title. I do want to point out that we've added a new field called the Shard of Glass. Let's see what the cat has to say about the Shard of Glass. It says, the blind spot or flaw the hero is not aware of. That sharp edged incident, bad behavior, tough truth, or wrong done that the hero swallowed a long time ago. By the end of your tale, your hero must look at this flaw and deal with it in order to transform and become something glorious. So there you go, the Shard of Glass an important part of having fully developed characters that transform during the course of your story. Now I can add more characters here by clicking the plus button, but just for fun, I'm going to close the detail view and add a couple more characters from the focused layout. I'll add a supporting character, type in their name, and again, I'm just going to close it just to reinforce the idea. Now I need another main character, and there's the name, and I'll close the window. Okay, so I've got two main characters and a supporting character. Now what can I do from here? The main thing is that you can rearrange the characters so they are in order by their importance in the story. Just drag a character to the new location in the row. Now you can also change the category or type for character just by dragging it into another section, like this. And to delete a character, just drag it and drop it on the trash can. Now here's that focus thing again. You don't need to open the characters in the detail view to refine their descriptions. You just work on them right here. I'll type something for this Bob character. Okay, there we go. And don't forget the collapse button to hide individual categories of characters. Oh, one more thing. If you have images that you want to use to represent your characters, it's easy to attach them here. All you have to do is drag and drop the image file onto the profile image on the card, like this. When you drop an image onto the character card, it creates an attachment linked to this character. You can give the attachment a title, then you can select the proper category for the attachment itself. I'll change Research to Character Image so that when I go into the Attachment section, that attachment will be in the correct category. Now, since the attachment is now linked to this character, you can also select the category as to how this attachment applies to this character. I'll select Representative Images. And just like the character categories or types, you can also manage your attachment types and character attachment types and preferences. Okay, you can also type a description for the attachment itself. Right now it just shows the file name. And you can type a description of how the attachment applies to this character. 
Now, before I forget, another new feature we've added is the ability to type URLs or to paste in URLs, then to click on the link and go to the website like this. I'll type in a URL, www.savethecat.com. Notice that it is recognized as a URL. Just click on it to open it in your browser. Okay, let's keep going. I'll click the Locations tab. Notice we also have categories for locations. This is new in this update. We've also added categories or types for setups and payoffs to help you be more organized. If you have the Premium or Pro version, you'll also be able to categorize your things. All those magic spells and weapons and so on. Characters, locations, things, relationships, setups and payoffs all work the same. Simple as that. But let's take a quick look at the Notes tab. Let's say you're doing a little research on the web and you find a web page that has some great info that you can use in your story. Now I found a web page that relates to my archaeological adventure story. All I have to do to make sure I don't lose it is to select the URL in the browser, then drag and drop it into my research category. It becomes a note with the URL right in it. Like I demonstrated before, just click on the link to return to the page. You can also edit the note by clicking on the keyboard icon like this. You can give it a new title, change the category or type, and add any additional notes. Now I want to show you the Attachments tab because it is a little different than the other sections, but only in a minor way. You'll notice we have an attachment here in the Character Image section. That's the image we dropped onto the Bob character. The attachment was added and linked to Bob. In this section, when you click the plus button to add an attachment, it will open a file dialog so that you can select a file. I'll click the plus button for background information. I'll pick a PDF, save it, and there it is. If you want to view the PDF, just double click on the icon. The appropriate app will be open for you. In some cases, the OS may not know which app you want to use if you have multiple apps that can accept that type of file. Just pick the one you want to use. Okay, that covers most of the new features in this Focus Layout Update. Be sure to watch the second video in the Focus Layout Update series about the exciting changes we've made to the board. I think you're really going to like them. And if you're using the Pro Edition, there's a third video just for you. If you have any questions, please contact me at tech at and thanks for watching.